conversational, okay? So here we are, P14-34A. And the two things they do give us are the income statement and a comparative balance sheet. Comparative balance sheet meaning that they show year to year. Okay, so this one's 2014 and 2015. We're gonna need that. Can you think of why? Well, we need, yeah. The well, depreciation's over here on the, to get the changes, right? Remember, we're adding back and subtracting changes in um, current assets and liabilities, right? We need to reconcile those things back. So the way we would do that is we'd have to compute the change between the two years. That's how we know whether it increased or not, or decreased, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do the operating section. And what do we start with in the operating section? Net income. Where would I get the net income? Yes, the income statement. So 93,600 over here is coming from the income statement. And then I'm gonna need to add back and subtract certain things. So one of the first things I'm looking for is depreciation expense, okay? And over here on my income statement, I have 14,100 in depreciation expense. So I'm gonna put 14,100 as a positive because that's being added back. That's being added back to net income. Okay. The other thing I would wanna be looking for is any kind of gain or loss on the sale of my long-term assets. So I, I might have to do a little additional reading. Let's see what they say up here in this sentence. Additionally, Grand Tree purchased land at 25,600 by financing at 100%, so that's not related. During the year, there was no sale of land, no retirements of stock, and no treasury stock transactions. The plant asset was disposed of for zero dollars. So they got rid of the plant asset and the cost and accumulated depreciation of the disposed asset was 11,340, meaning that it was fully depreciated, okay? So it looks like there might not have been any kind of gain or loss, just the purchase of the plant asset, right? The plant asset went up, right? It increased. And then the other thing is, if there was a gain or loss, they would be showing the gain or loss here on the income statement as well. So I don't see any gain or loss listed. So I'm gonna pass on that. So my next job will be to get the differences. Now if you had this in a spreadsheet, you could line these two balance sheet columns up, 2014 and 2015, and just subtract. Okay. Here we gotta kinda go one by one. So the first one is my accounts receivable. My accounts receivable increased, and that one I can see, you know, I don't need my calculator. It went from 25,000 to, to uh, 26,800, so it went up by 1,800. So increase in um, accounts receivable, that's actually subtracted, okay? Any increase in accounts receivable which is a current asset, we have to subtract. Merchandise inventory decreased, okay? So merchandise inventory went down, and you can subtract uh, 79,300 from 91,500. So inventory went down by 12,200. That gets added back. So my decrease and merchandise inventory I'm gonna add back. Okay. That's, those are the things I wanted you to memorize, right? What gets added and subtracted, okay. Um, so that takes care of the current assets other than cash. So we'll look at the current liabilities. Accounts payable increase by 5,500. <coughs> that one I don't need a calculator, right? It went from 30,000 to 
35,500. So 5,500. An increase in a current liability is added back. So my increase in accounts payable, the 5,500 gets added back. Okay. Then the next one, the next current liability is accrued liabilities. Those decreased. Okay. So it looks like they went down. Go ahead. The accounts payable increase is added back, right? But the increase in the accrued They're opposite. Oh, okay. One is an asset, one's a liability. Okay. You gotta do opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Uh huh. There are actually more there's more to that question. I mean I could give you a long reason. But the real way to memorize it is that it's it's opposite, yeah. Okay. So accrued liabilities decreased. So they went down from 30,900 to 28,600. So it's like a, is it a 2,300 decrease? You might want to double check if you're not all the way confident. Yeah, 2,300. Now a decrease in a current liability is subtracted. Okay. And a little more than just saying because it's the opposite of what uh, asset does, right? That's your total liability? What did you just calculate? I took the difference between these two. The accrued? Yeah. Okay. Is that they got paid off, right? So if it got paid off, we use cash to pay it. Right, so that's, it has a decreasing effect on cash. Yeah. Let's see. Decrease in accrued liability. Let's see. Now we need to tally them all up. So I'm going to tally them all up. I'll start 14,100 positive minus 1,800 plus 12,200 plus 5,500. Minus 23. So that's where I put it. I put it right over here. And then I'm going to add that to net income because it's positive. 121,300. Assuming we got everything and we did the math right, looks like we got it right. Says nice work. You didn't have to put the title on there. Like they put the titles for me, and this is not a. Um, it's just assume that this is a subtotal because you might have had another line item sitting right there. So that's the net cash provided by operating activities because it's positive. You see how this is labeled. If it had been negative, then it would been would have been used for. It would have been shown in parentheses. But because it's positive, it's provided by. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now we'll do investing activities. So investing activities, they really hover around the long-term asset section of your balance sheet. But they also will be affected by what this sentence says up here. So I gotta come back and read it again. It says, Grand Tree purchased land for 25,600 by financing it. So they didn't really pay any cash for it. That's not a cash flow. So we're not gonna actually put that on the, the cash flow statement itself, okay? And then they got rid of a plant asset which had the same cost and accumulated depreciation. So they didn't have any cash flow from getting rid of that asset. Okay. So let's look at that plant asset account. The plant
acid actually increased, though. So it went. I'm taking the difference, right? 117, 290 minus 113, 330. So 3,960. That's what it increased by. And it, they purchased land for 25,600. And they got rid of a plant asset. It's almost like we really got to think. There's n almost not enough information, right? You need to analyze the accumulated depreciation account. Okay, so that's going to take a little bit more effort. Why don't we do this? We'll take our spreadsheet, make ourselves some T accounts. So we'll go plant asset, and then we'll have that accumulated depreciation related to the plant asset. We'll just go AD. Okay. So we've got a beginning balance in plant asset of 113, 330, and an ending balance of 117, 290. And then accumulated depreciation, you have a beginning balance of 18630 and an ending balance of 21390 Okay, So we're going to have to take into consideration two things when we analyze this, maybe more than two things. Depreciation expense was 14100 So that made accumulated depreciation go up, 14100 okay. And then they also acquired a plant asset. For it was 25600 So this is purchase of a plant asset <coughs> that they did with, with the liability. So there's no cash flow, right? It's just a wash. Okay. Where did you get that from? Right up here, 25,000. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to really analyze it because I don't want to miss something, right? There might be something happening in there that we have to fish out. Um, so we've got to take all these things into consideration. Now it says, the cost and accumulated depreciation of the disposed asset was 11340 So that means that we took 11340 That was a disposal of a plant asset. We got rid of it. And its accumulated depreciation was the exact same amount. Okay, disposal. Okay. So now that I have those two T accounts set up, I can kind of analyze it. First thing I want to do is to check and see if it, it's true, if there's nothing else going on. And if there's something else going on, then I won't hit the same balance. But I hit the same balance for plant assets. Okay. I'll do the same thing for accumulated depreciation. Right? Beginning plus the depreciation expense minus the disposal, and I got the same so I'm comfortable. It looks like nothing happened in the long-term investing section unless we have another long-term asset account. Okay. Sometimes they don't tell you everything and something else is going on. And if that didn't ring true, if it didn't pan out with all of the variables that they gave us, then we might have something else going on. So that checks out. There doesn't appear to be anything happening around my 
long term or my plant assets but there's another long term account right and that's my land look at that my land increased my land went from 9000 to 34600 right so is that a 25000 no 20 26 25600 increase if you're not sure double check right so 34600 minus 9000 25600 okay so if land went from 9000 to 34600 that means we bought more land right so if you're buying more land that's cash going out of the company so that's a cash outflow okay so i'm going to show that as negative um, 25600 and that's the purchase of land oh, i'm sorry we might have made a mistake here we got to rewind okay you see that 25600 they're already talking about that we should not have included that here right cuz that's that's the land account that we're talking about okay so now there is something going on there's something happening over here right I accidentally put the 25,600 in the plant asset purchases, but it's not, right? It didn't add up, right? So here, if I have a 13, uh, 113,330 beginning balance and I got rid of 11,340, how do I get to 117,290? Well, let's see how we do that, we'll say. There must have been a purchase involved, right? So you'll take your ending balance, add the disposal, and minus your beginning balance. Okay? Looks like we bought 15,300 of plant assets. Then you want to double check it, right? Beginning plus purchase minus the disposal. And it checks out. So really, I have 15,300. And they don't tell me that anywhere, right? So we actually did have to fish something out. 15,000 right here in yellow. 15,300. That's a cash outflow for the purchase of plant assets, acquisition of plant assets right so don't combine them all together there was a mistake we made where did you get that the 13 the 15300 okay so we start off like this right these are the known variables right we know the beginning right we know the end and we know that we disposed of 11340 right but what Yeah, so I'm removing the cost of the asset with this credit, right? That, that's what the cost of the asset was, 11000 That's not what you lost, okay. That's not what you lost, that's what you paid for it. But you no longer have the asset, so you have to take it off your books, okay? So you're, we're removing that from the plant asset account, okay? So if I do that and I set that T account up like that, that doesn't check out, right? 113,330 minus 11,340 is not 17,290. So what I'm saying is there must have been something else that happened. And that something else looks like it was a purchase because we need to have more on the debit side to make that account true, right? So what I did was I basically took the 117,290, added the amount the cost of the disposed asset and subtracted the beginning balance. That's how I got the 1530. Okay? 
So we we solve for that. We figured that number out. That wasn't given to us. Okay. Yeah. But the other three numbers were given. Right? The the other these three guys they were given right this comes from these two come from the balance sheet that's this is 2014 and this is 2015 right and this is from that sentence up at the top well let's see if it works Was my check answer? It's all covered up. Right. That's it. it. There wasn't anything else. I mean, the purchase of land because we didn't use cash to do it. It doesn't show on your cash flow statement. Okay. We wouldn't put it on your cash flow statement. Um, you just put the same number in the cash. Yeah, because. You know, in, in another situation, you might have more, more than one item, so you got to show it individually, then you show it in total. And this would be net cash used for investing activities, not provided, because it's negative, right? Remember, we, we had to derive that amount. So that makes this problem a little more complex than the others. Why would they record all that information but not record that they purchased? Well, they're not. That's not what they're doing. They're 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 not telling you everything that they recorded. They're just giving you a problem, and you're having to solve. Okay. You're having to kind of work with incomplete information to put together a statement of cash flow. Yeah. When you're right, probably out there, they'd have a listing of what they actually did, and you could work from that and verify against that. Okay. Now we move to financing activities. Excuse me. And over here, in the financing activity section, you want to first of all look at your long term liability section. So if you got a note payable, we can kind of do the same thing here, right? We can use a T account. We'll just go note payable. And then we'll remove these numbers. Okay, so if you got a note payable right here, that starts at a hundred thousand and ends at seventy five thousand okay so it went down by twenty five thousand but remember up here we bought land and financed it at twenty five thousand six hundred so that actually had an increasing effect right twenty five thousand six hundred this is for the purchase of land right that increased the note payable. So you do a similar similar analysis. It, you look at it and you say, okay, unless there's anything else that was financed, and I don't think they mentioned it, you went from a hundred thousand, right, and you got, you got more land for twenty five thousand six hundred, but you end up with a balance of seventy five thousand. So that doesn't ring true either. There must have been something happening over here that made it decrease. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug that number. You're gonna figure out, okay, what do I need to go from 100,000 plus 25,000 to get down to 75,000? Well, all you really have to do is take 100 plus 25 minus the 75, okay? 50,600, then you wanna double check it, right? Beginning plus any increase minus that decrease that we derived and it checks out. Okay. So it looks like there was a payment on the note payable. We paid down the note payable by 50,600. 
So I'll take that 50,600. That's going to be a negative. And that's going to be what we call our payment. Let's see. Cash payment on notes payable. All right? Now, the second thing you want to look at in the financing section is the common stock. In this case, it looks like my common stock increased. So when common stock increases, that's more money coming into the company. What did it increase by? Well, we'll just get the difference. 88,300 minus 64,700. So it went up by 23,600. Let's see, cash receipt from the issuance of common stock. Okay. I'll pull my spreadsheet up for the next one. Because we need to figure out what our dividend is. Okay. Do you remember the formula for, for retained earnings? It's beginning, retained earnings, plus what? Net income. Net income minus dividends gives me ending retained earnings okay so my beginning retained earnings from this balance sheet over here looks like it was 10,100 right you see right down here that's a given and then my ending retained earnings is 36,100 Now, where would I get my net income? From the net income statement, right? So my net income is 93600 You could do this with a T account as well, right? I'm doing it in your uh, retained earnings statement format because I, I thought it might make a little more sense. Okay, so here we're dealing with a situation where I'm saying 10100 plus 93600 Minus what? I'll put a question mark there. Okay. Minus what gives me 36,100? So again, we got to do math to figure it out. All we have to do is take the beginning plus the net income and minus the ending balance. And that should be just about right. Now, I always double check. I don't know why, but I, I, I go back and I do the math in order, right? I take beginning plus net income minus my dividend of 67,600 and it checks out. Okay? I should have showed this as negative just so you guys right? So you know we're we're subtracting it. So I've backed into the dividend Right? Again, I I figured into the dividend 67,600. So I'll come over here. I'll get these out of the way. 67,600. Make sure I Yep. Yeah. And that's for the payment of a dividend, cash payment of dividends. Okay? And then you take one more look at your balance sheet. read any additional information. There doesn't seem to be any other account either in long-term liabilities or equity that would affect the financing cash flow. So we're ready to do a subtotal over here. I'm gonna take that negative 50,600, I'm gonna add 23,600, and then I'm gonna subtract 67,600. So it looks like we have a net 94,600 cash used for financing activities. Okay? So far, so good. Okay. 
Now, why don't we figure out what our check figure is, the figure we're trying to match against before we do this, right? You want to make sure that your change in cash, so in our situation, it went from 15500 to 26900 you want to make sure that you get that that change that 11,400. So you might me remember that, right? Remember 11,400. I'll put it in memory. Okay. Now we're going to we're going to combine the three sections. So operating, investing, and financing. And the combination of tho those three should e equal our change in cash. So 121,300 minus 15,300 minus 94,600. And it looks like it does, because that looks really similar to the number I have in memory. So my net increase in cash is 11,400. And then just for presentation purposes, I'm going to show my beginning cash balance, 15,500. And then basically we're adding that to the change in cash. So you're going to have 26,900. And that should match my ending balance, which it does. Okay. So our cash flow ch statement actually checks out. Right? That's the three sections of the cash flow statement using the indirect method. Now, there was one little thing that happened, and it was that financing, that $25,600 purchase of land at 100% financing with a note payable. Even though that doesn't appear on the actual cash flow statement, we've got to show it as a note. We've got to make note of it. So what they're asking you to do down here is to make note of that. Um, we're going to say acquisition of land using long-term note payable. And that was 25,600. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think we need to list it twice. So I might do it like this. Now, it has the land effect and the liability effect. So we'll just try like that. Yeah, that works. Okay, it's just being listed in a note payable, in a note, right? It's not like you have to show the offsetting effect. Okay. Where did the, um, the, what's it called? the interest from that long-term note payable show up? That interest. Most likely you're paying more than 20, whatever it is, 25,600, right? Right. Oh, on the note. You mean you're paying interest on the note, right? Yeah, that's it, right. That's sitting in the net income. Zero percent financing. Y you see net income here? Uh -huh. That that would be sitting in there as an expense. So to get to the ninety-three thousand six hundred, if you paid interest, that would have been a cash outflow in the operating section. So how do they do that? Like, because you calculated how much. Well, well, it's embedded in net income, right? So the interest, any interest that you paid would be part of net income. And it just happens each year. Yeah, because it, it's, it's a payment, it's a cash payment, um, but it's also an expense, right? Remember, net income is revenue minus expense, right? That gives you net income. One of the expenses is an interest expense. I think if we look over here at our income statement, yeah, there it is. There's interest expense sitting there. So it's already a part of net income. Now, there's no interest payable. So there's no, there's no, um, what we say, liability. Because you're only looking at that year? No, you're only looking at the items that are cash flow items. So the reason we're adding and subtracting things back net income is we're we're putting back items that were not cash flow items so for instance depreciation expense that's an expense 
that that reduces net income, but it's not a cash flow. There's no cash outflow for depreciation. So to get to cash flow, I had to add that expense back. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So we're we're doing these reconciling items to to get to a cash flow figure, to get to a number that shows the net amount of cash that either entered the company or went out uh, for that year. For that year. Okay. So some things that are sitting in net income were paid in cash. For instance, interest expense. It was an expense, but it also was paid. So there's no reconciling. There's nothing that we have to add back. It's not like if it was an interest payable. Say, say it was interest expense. Say we made this journal entry here. Say it, we did this interest expense, interest payable. We'll just use a number, right? 2,500. Now that's an expense, that's making net income lower, but that's not a cash flow. So technically we would have to add that back to net income to, to get it um, back to what a, ca a more realistic cash flow figure would be because we are charging interest expense, but we didn't pay it. So the cash didn't leave the company, but it's still reducing net income. That expense is still reducing net income. So that would have to be added back. That's a different thing. I guess I'm saying like they're paying the interest over the term of the loan. Yes. So it's reflected every year. But the whole depending on when they pay it, right? Okay. So it the whole like um interest payable would show up in the net income though, even though they didn't pay it. If they didn't pay it, then we'd have to add it back. Okay. But in this case it appears that they paid it because so they paid off all the interest of that whole long-term loan? It, it looks like it because if they didn't pay it all off, they would have a, a um, interest payable sitting here. They, they paid off the amount that pertained to the time period we're looking at. Now, it's a long-term loan. There's going to be more interest expense in the following year. But they just don't worry about it for this year's accounting? This year's accounting, they paid what they owed okay. for this year, right? Okay. Interest isn't due... All, all of the interest on the loan isn't due up front. It's due as time passes. Yeah. So they just ignore the next year until it's time? Because we're only reporting on this year. Okay. Right, we're reporting on December 2015. Even though they still technically, I guess it's just separated. They're not gonna owe interest for 2016 until they're in 2016. So there's no interest payable until they get to? No, until, until you hit the year in which you owe the interest, you don't show it as a liability. Right. I mean, you could have a 30-year loan. You're not going to show 30 years worth of interest, ex uh, interest expenses of liability in the first year because interest isn't due. Even though it's technically still a liability hanging over that company, though, that is it still... It's not a liability until it's due, right? So it's not due till 2016. It's not due to 2017, right? Now, the loan itself is a liability. We'll show the loan. But the, the interest, the rent on that money, if you want to make it that way, that's not due until you, you've had that money for that time well, period. because sometimes they pay it off faster than they were planning. So wouldn't it yeah, you could pay it off faster. Yeah. What I'm saying, though, is, right, if you have a, a loan that goes over a time frame, Right, so maybe you got, just make it a short one, right? So you got 2015 here, 2016, 2017. And say it's a $100,000 loan, right, at 5%, okay? And make it due, due annually, right? Just make it simple. So you're gonna have 5% due on December 31st, 2015. You're gonna have another 5,000 due on 2016 and another 5,000. That's all gonna be interest that you have to pay by the end of the year, right? When you prepare 2015's financial statements, 
you don't owe 2016's amount yet. You only owe 2015's amount. 2016's interest isn't due until 2016. So you don't need to show that as a liability in 2015, right? Because interest is really the charge that you're paying for the use of the money. And you haven't used the money in 2016 yet. Kind of like rent, right? Yeah. You wouldn't owe next year's rent until you've been in that. But they don't like plan ahead knowing that they're going to have to pay it? That, well, that would be something you do in your budget and forecast. But in your actual, what you're preparing, financial statements you're preparing, you're not going to show the users, oh, well, I owe, you know, I owe $10,000 in interest for 2016 and 17 when 2016 and 17 haven't even elapsed yet. You, you see what I'm saying? You, you didn't really, you didn't get the benefit of the money for 2016 and 17 yet. So why should you show that you owe interest? You know, like you said, there's a possibility you might pay it back. Then you would never have to pay that interest. So the hundred thousand, is that the hundred thousand that you have to make the credit? Yeah, the, the hundred thousand is the note payable. That's what you borrowed. So that we're going to show that as a liability because you have that money in your hands. You're you've taken that money, the use of that money, you've borrowed it. So that's a liability as soon as you borrow it. But the interest, the interest payable, if you want to call it that, interest payable, that doesn't become a liability until time goes by, right? The longer you have it out, then the more interest you're going to pay. But as of, if you want to put it that way, as of 2015, if you had not paid 2015's interest expense yet, then you would have a $5,000 liability called interest payable, which you would have to pay for 2015. But you're not going to accrue a liability for something that you haven't used that's happening in the future. Right? But you could forecast it in your budget. You could say, yeah. You probably would do it on your income statement, though, as interest expense. Forecast it as your projected interest expense. Let's see now. What are they asking me at the bottom? How will what you learned in this problem help you evaluate an investment? It says, learn how to predict future cash flows, evaluate management decisions, and predict the ability of the company to pay their debts and dividends. That might be a good one. Uh, learn how, to op how operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities generate cash receipts and cash payments. I think they're both sound kind of good. We'll go A and B. And if it doesn't like it, I think we did all right. Well done. <laughs>